Ich weiß, es ist nur Rock'n'Roll, doch ich mag es, beziehungsweise you can't always get what you want. Herzlich willkommen, ihr lieben Systemanalytiker, zu einer brandneuen, gerade erst zusammengestanzten Fast-Forward-Ausgabe. Und heute, da wird hier eine der letzten Legenden des Rock'n'Roll reingerollt werden. Ein Mann, der mit seinen Songs und Bühnenhosen Musikgeschichte geschrieben hat. Und natürlich hat er sie alle gehabt, um mit Helmut Berger zu sprechen. Ladies and Gentlemen, liebe Tiere. Heute zu Gast, weltexklusiv hier bei Fast Forward, Mick Jagger, der vorletzte englische Gentleman of Rock'n'Roll. Mick Jagger wird also zu Gast sein, der große Jetsetter und Businessman des Musikgeschäfts, äh, begnadeter Performer und gemeinsam mit Keith Richards, Autor von ungefähr 374 der wichtigsten Rocksongs aller Zeiten. Hauptsächlich wird es um sein neues, durchaus okayes Album gehen, Goddess in the Doorway heißt das Teil. Und vor dem Interview gab es vom Management die Ansage, keine Politikfrage. Keine Klatschfragen, sonst ruckzuck fresse dick Charlotte. Außerdem hieß es vorher, der Mann ist eine totale Zicke, seien Sie bitte auf der Hut. War natürlich alles ziemlicher Mumpitz, weil Mick Jagger offenbar sehr gut und sehr lange geschlafen hat. Und damit es eine runde Sache wird, habe ich für die heutige Show unten aus muffigen Fast-Forward-Archiv äh, alles äh, von so All-in-Rolling-Stones-Clips rausgeholt, was derzeit gesendet werden kann. Und da sind ein paar wirkliche Hammergranaten dabei. Ne? Unter anderem die legendäre, verhonkte Live-Version von Z. Satisfaction. Äh, erstmal gibt es aber jetzt einen anderen Klopper. Hier sind die Rolling Stones mit Sympathy for the Devil und danach dann hier in der Show Mick Jagger. Bis gleich. Get off my cloud, du Sau. Und nochmal kurz zurück hier in der Show. Gleich hier zu Gast Mick Jagger. Gerade hat er seine Autobiografie in die Tonne gekloppt, ne? weil Nostalgie ist nicht dieses Mannes Tasse Wurst. Stattdessen ist er jetzt vorrangig zugange als Filmproduzent. Und es war sogar zu hören, dass er mit Martin Scorsese ein Drehbuch geschrieben hat, ne? wo dann alle die ganze Zeit wieder sagen dürfen, hey, was ist los mit dir? Ne? Gleich ist er zu Gast hier im Interview. Erstmal aber jetzt, wie versprochen, die legendäre Live-Version äh, von Satisfaction. Und da honken sich die Stones ein zusammen, dass einem vor Freude eigentlich schlagartig die Fontanelle platzen muss. Ne? Also macht euch auf was gefasst. Hier sind sie aus der Abteilung. Unglaublich, aber Rock'n'Roll. Die Stones mit Satisfaction und danach dann Mick Jagger im Fast Forward Interview. Bis gleich. Meine Damen und Herren, Sie sehen Fast Forward und hier ist er jetzt, Mick Jagger. Welcome on my show. Thank you. Nice to be here. <laughs> and you've got a, a new album out called mm -hmm. Goddess in the Doorway. Yeah. And I read that you recorded most of the b um, basic tracks yeah. at home in your own studio. Yeah, I don't really have a studio. I, d I, just put it, I just put my computerized sort of box in a room. Yeah. In a, wherever I am kind of thing, like in a hotel room or in my house. Uh, in France and in um, wherever I was. So I put it in there in the keyboard and uh, drum machine and stuff. And then I wrote lots of the songs on the guitar. But it was, it was fun doing it at home because it's very, it's slightly more relaxed. Yeah. Um, and then I built it up later on and I like, added things and, um, and then some of the tracks later on I did live tracks with uh, musicians in London. Yeah, but, but some of the tracks sort of stayed roughly yeah. the way they were recorded yeah, in the first Yeah, I mean, some track. of them were just like, when I wrote the song the first time, like, there's a song called Joy, I remember that, that, uh, that the, actually, it was the first time I just wrote it, and I used the first verse of the first time I ever did it, so it's kind of fun doing it like that, so you get this really fresh kind of vibe, that sometimes you lose it a little bit when you go to a studio and go on a bit. Yeah, and uh, one thing I like very much about the album is this uh, super balance between uh, contemporary elements and traditional stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it when, while you're writing a song, do you sort of hear in your head exactly what it's going to sound like yeah, at the end? Yeah, more or Well, some of them you do. Some of them you, you hear like exactly in your head like you want. Like There's one there called Lucky Day, which is more kind of a reggae tune. Mm -hmm. And that I heard it exactly like it sort of came out. And others, you know, like Visions of Paradise, are, are more, you know, you know it's going to be a certain way, but you're not quite sure, you know, that you sort of play with it later on. So, you know, some of them, yes, you do hear them in your head, exactly. When you're writing them, you hear them in your head. I want it to be like this. I hear all this music in my head, and then you've got to get there, you know? <laughs> yeah, sort of work yourself <laughs> you've got to work on into the paper. That. Yeah. yeah. And um, the title track, how did that arrangement come up? Because that one sounds very exotic to me. Yeah. That sort of came, those, uh, that bit came at the end, I start, I put this introduction on the guitar on, that came really later on, because that was just like a dance, I heard that as a dance track from the beginning, I was just like, out there dancing one night in somewhere, I don't know. In yeah. India? No, no, it was in Paris, I think. <laughs> you know, in Paris they play lots of Arabic sort yeah. of dance music, 
so so I th I think I was slightly influenced by that, you yeah. know. So I just came back home and started to play a sort of just very simple thing on the guitar, uh, and just with a simple dance beat, and I built it up from there. Yeah, and um, so there are two tracks I think with Pete Townsend on it. Yeah. Um, did Did you write the songs together, or did, you, did he no, just turn up in no, the studio and help out? No, I wrote out? no, I wrote all the songs before, and then I thought Pete, because Pete is my neighbour. In, in London, he lives he lives opposite me. Yeah, see, I can't imagine no, he things like that. Live, it really sounds mad. No, he lives like, <laughs> no, I live here and he just lives 20 yards there. Yeah. So then he said to me, you're making your album, can I play on it? And I said, yeah, because he played on, on, a, on a solo record of mine once before. Um, so I said, yeah, and then I had to figure out which one he'd be the, you know, the one for, to show him yeah. off in the best way, you know. And so I, he played on one called Gun, which is a bit of a sort of... That's the nasty one. Very nasty one. Yes. Well, they can't all be nice. <laughs> uh, uh, and then he played on... Um, he played on... What else did he play on? He played on the one called Joy, yeah. the one that Bono sings on as well. Exactly. So, so it's you three on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I read this thing about Missy Elliott. Is it true that she was supposed to be on the album no, and never turned... turn up. What, she didn't get up or didn't well, find the I don't the know studio. what she did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't talk to her afterwards. No, well, no, but you know, it's all right. Yes. She was busy. Yeah, I think it's quite charming not to turn up to your record Oh, well, she recording. was on tour, I think, as well. Yeah. So, you know, it was a bit difficult crossing. But she was supposed to sing. I wanted her to do this rap on either tune called, on the air called Hideaway, which Wycliffe produced. Yeah. And I had this idea for it. It's like... Me, it's the, the, the lyrics about I want to go away somewhere on my own and I want to leave everyone and throw away my phone and like that and I'm on the beach. And, I, and her answer rap was going to be, Yeah, I know why, you know, <laughs> I know why you're going to go, you know, you've got another woman there, really. I don't believe you're hiding away on your own. I have this idea for her rap, you know, which is like a comedy thing. Yeah. But, you know, maybe if I do a remix of it, I get someone else to do it. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know who. Lil Kim. Lil Kim, yeah, it's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Have naked Lil she Kim. She would do it. a version maybe even dirtier than, than Miss. Yes, <laughs> this is more bitchy. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And we'll have a short break and then we'll be back okay. in a second with Mick Jagger. Mm -hmm. Where hey. Okay. Meine Damen und Herren, Mick Jagger bei Fast Forward heute zu Gast. Um, can you sort of tell if your, cha your writing technique has changed over the years somehow? Um, well, yeah, for instance, when, when I first started writing, I didn't used to write, I just used to write the lyrics. Yeah. And, uh, and Keith used to write all the tunes. And, um, well, that's like a long time ago, I'm going back. <laughs> to the, yeah, I won't even tell you when. No, you don't have to. <laughs> no, um, but, you know, since a long time, I, I wrote most, I, I wrote, I write on guitar mostly, and then, um, uh, but then I write also on keyboards, but nearly all these songs I wrote on guitar, because well, I had a friend of mine, Matt Clifford, who played the uh, keyboards a lot, so I never got looking on keyboards. <laughs> and then I used to write a lot at the beginning, I'd write just on my own, and then I liked to play with a drummer, you know, because you, to get a groove it's really hard, but then since drum machines got so easy to use and good, I don't really need to have a drummer there all the time. Like, it's nice to work with a drummer, yeah. but when you're writing, you can't always have a drummer, you know, wake up in the middle of the night on an idea, you know, it's like, call a drummer, it's yeah. not really going to work <laughs> for you. No, quickly. it does not work. <laughs> so I use a lot of that, and then, then sometimes I write from a lyric idea, and sometimes I write from just nothing, and just write on the guitar and then get the ideas at the same time. Is it, is it something that you can sort of tell you get more disciplined somehow, that you have special writing days or whatever? Yeah, I like to, well, you can write, and the great thing about writing, whether you're writing a book or a song or lyrics or anything, is that you can, you don't need much equipment, you know, you just need a, like your pad and you need a pencil, and then you can get ideas. Yeah. But then, when I've got some ideas and I know I'm going to write, I like, like to go somewhere like for two weeks maybe. Like but, on holiday? Yeah, you know, like with no one around, but not too many people maybe. And then just concentrate every day, you go a little bit disciplined and you say, okay, I'm now going to, three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm, I'm not very good in the morning, so like, okay, three o'clock, I'm going to start, I'm going to start writing at three and go on to, you know, seven and then I'm going to take a break and then I go from eight to two in the morning or something like that. Yeah. And then after about two weeks, you get a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the beginning maybe it's a little bit like worrying because you never know what, if you're going to get To get it going. You never but, know if you're going to get anything. Yeah. But then it always tends to come, you know. Okay. And 